Hey, are you ready? Gary Glassman is coming. The boss. Hi, Connor, but I'll, I'll, give you my, I'll give you my corporate look, though, okay? This is, ah, okay. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, where sure. I am, and this is the, this is the corporate look. This is, wow. These are my wow. offices. Okay, my friend. So, it's uh, on behalf of Stal Italian Odontics, uh, I'm really happy to have you here today. Uh, on uh, a coffee with a coffee with uh, is uh, like an interview about endotopics and uh, uh, I want to invite some great friends and you are one of the, my best endo expert in endodontics and also a big friend of mine and uh, Gary welcome on uh, coffee with uh, thank you who you are first of all well, my name is Gary Glassman, and I am an endodontist. I've been practicing endodontics for a very long time, and I've been teaching it probably for just as long, for probably about 35 years. And I probably split my time between full-time practice and uh, teaching, which accounts probably for about 30% of my time. And I also have another full-time job as Chief Dental Officer for Dental Corp Canada. We're a network of over 400 offices from coast to coast uh, across Canada. And um, I'm also the faculty chair for DC Institute, which is the teaching division of, of Dental Corp. So I facilitate all their teaching, all their curriculum. And um, um, we have an amazing associate development program, which we're just launching. And uh, it's all patient centric. It's all for the patient. Wow. So uh, I'm very excited about that. So. I have three full-time jobs, really. <laughs> <laughs> great, my friend, great. And uh, uh, would you mind if uh, uh, I can ask you a few questions about uh, a topic that uh, uh, is mistakes in endodontics? Do you agree about it? Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Thank you so much, my friend. So I have the first question for you. Because I recently, I read uh, an interview on Dental Tribute that you released and it was uh, about mistakes and uh, responsibilities in endodontics. In my opinion, this is a great topic because uh, what happens in our Facebook community uh, do, or during congresses that uh, you can see just the case of the year or uh, uh, the sensation is that everyone can become a superhero in endodontics in a few seconds. What do you think about fake errors or uh, the idea maybe of uh, showing also uh, mistakes uh, in uh, social media and inside congresses? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a great topic. And, you know, as a specialist, uh, I've seen so many of my patients present after endodontic treatment that failed or was abandoned mid-treatment due to a complication. And listen, I've experienced my fair share of my own failed treatments as well. And I've witnessed the distress that these situations can cause my colleagues. And I certainly know they've caused me many a sleepless night. You know, as dentists, we always want to be perfect. You know, we don't really have a lot of margin for error. And as an endodontist, we're, you know, we're working in millimeters. And certainly extractions can occur because of, uh, because of fractured roots and, you know, faulty restorations. Uh, but there's lots of things that, that, uh, that we do. Uh, that maybe we can anticipate and maybe we can prevent as we learn. And I think it's crucial. I think it's important that we share all our failures with a very open mind and a lot of enthusiasm as we do with our successes. You know, we go to lectures and we go to seminars and we see all the great cases that, you know, the doctors present. But I think that uh, many life failures are people who don't realize how close they were to success when they gave up. You know, Thomas Edison said, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that, that haven't worked. And I think owing to the nature of our work, I think that we should share this information. It doesn't happen enough because I know clinicians in hospitals, they have to share their errors in morbidities, mortalities, in their conferences to ensure that to the best of their ability, these things never happen again. And because dentists often work alone and they work in isolation, we often don't get that ability to share the work. And I think that we need to reframe our lens through which we view failure. You know, mistakes are painful, but when we make them, if we can focus on the education 
And if we can focus on mutual collegial support with all our colleagues around the world, I think we can learn from each other and do so much more better. Yeah, sure. So um, why don't try to do also events, uh, congresses about common mistakes and how to uh, find a way of uh, avoid new mistakes or errors in endodontics. Thanks for uh, yeah, answering. Sure. Yeah, thank you for, for answering and uh, as usual, great answer. And uh, again about mistakes, my friend, from, uh, uh, we, uh, we launched a survey in Facebook inside the Stite Endodontics and it was about which is your worst nightmare in endodontics. And we discovered that, again, the file breakage in our community represents the real problem for around 70% of uh, endodontists. And what surprised me was just the 2% instead about the maintenance of the original anatomy, so without doing any alteration, like edges or zipping or overshaping and so on. In your opinion, what does it mean? So we have to, we have to be afraid just about file breakage and in case, how do you communicate it to your patient, if you do? Well, we, you know, when, when, when things do happen, we have to, you know, we actually have to tell our patients, we, we can't put our sort of head in the, I call it the ostrich effect. We can't bury our head in the sand. We have to be very upfront with our patients. It's not, uh, it's not negligence to separate a file. It's not malpractice to zip an apex or perforate. It's a procedural accident, a procedural misadventure. And, you know, being upfront with our patients and communicating with them, obviously having the empathy with them as well and explaining them what happened, you know, is, is something that we all have to learn and we all have to do. We can't hide behind our mistakes. You know, when we talk about failures and we talk about, you know, the worst nightmare that can occur, you know, we can prevent, you know, through experience and through the proper metallurgy and through the proper technique and technology that we have, we can prevent a lot of these procedural accidents. You know, we can prevent ledging by making sure we have a good glide path, making sure we have good patency, instrumenting through irrigants rather than instrumenting dry, um, making sure that, you know, we don't put too much pressure on a file and don't rush the case so we don't run into the problem of separating an instrument. Where I think a lot of focus should be on, my worst nightmare is not breaking an instrument or separating or perforating my worst nightmare is not be able to make a proper diagnosis or making an inaccurate diagnosis. The last, and I've seen this happen so many times, you know, in Canada at least, and as an endodontist, 95% of my patients come from a referring dentist. And a lot of these are diagnostic issues where the dentist either drills into the wrong tooth, treats the wrong tooth, can't make a proper diagnosis, provides the patient with the, an improper medication. So it all starts with making a proper diagnosis. It all starts with going through a systematic diagnostic protocol, making sure that we listen to the patient, making sure that we understand what their complaint is, going through the objective examination of clinical tests, periodontal probing, coming to a pulpal and periodicular diagnosis. And then once we assess all that information, then we can plan for treatment properly. So in my opinion, it all starts with the diagnosis and making a proper diagnosis. Everything else should fall into place as we treat the patient. So you got the point in my opinion, because uh, uh, the, my next question was about uh, suggesting to our followers. And in my opinion, you got the point. So we have to train more ourselves about proper diagnosis maybe taking the experience of uh, someone like you or someone uh, with more experience uh, than, than us or than young people. And diagnosis, of course, is uh, the real nightmare, also from my side, because uh, I had the same problem that you mentioned before. And uh, so training. And the last question is again about training. Uh, I know that you have a great training center and uh, you educate so many people uh, every year. And uh, during this uh, uh, lockdown COVID uh, session, uh, during the last two years, we saw many webinars. 
uh, so many webinars and some one of them, in my opinion, they were really boring webinars. <laughs> uh, what do you think about uh, webinars, online education and is what your best way for educate and train a beginner or also for correct maybe some uh, uh, expert in avoiding errors daily errors what do you think so first question about what happened what we saw online and the second question is what is the best way for educate a beginner or an endodontist yeah it's a great question i mean you know soon as the lockdowns occurred i remember my last in-person course was at the Pacific Dental Conference in March of 2020, and we flew home, and uh, we heard about this uh, virus, and everything shut down immediately. So what did I do? Well, I still had students. I still had doctors that wanted to train. I had graduating uh, graduating class that didn't have hardly any experience, and they wanted to come to my seminars and come to my programs. So we quickly went to webinars, and I created this um, remote live hands-on program where I worked with Dentsply Serona and they, we put a little kit together for the doctors. We sent the kit out. Uh, it was a two hour webinar, uh, remote live hands-on program. And it worked really, really well because I think two hours is probably enough. After that, the, the attendees get bored. I certainly get bored. I <laughs> hear myself talk for two hours straight. But this live remote hands-on program was really, really great. We sent them everything in a kit, 3D printed tooth, whether it's Wave 1 Gold, Pro Taper Gold, um, the syringes, the Pro Lube, the hand files. I went online, I lectured, I demoed under my microscope, we put everything together with Zoom, and then we gave them an opportunity to, to follow along. And then I went to the next segment, lectured, demonstrated, shaped the canal using one of those systems. And the two hours before you know it, is is over. I mean, it, it it goes very, very quickly. So I found that was a great compromise. And we'll call it a compromise because nothing replaces the in-person experience, the yes. hands-on live in-person experience. And uh, that's what I really, really enjoy. And thank goodness we're getting back to it again. Hopefully things stay the way they are and continue to improve uh, with the way things are with, um, with giving live in-person in, in programs. So uh, e-learning is great. I do have an e-learning program with DC Institute. It's 32 modules. A doctor can log in and they can go through it at their own pace. There's questions that are asked during that uh, e-learning that they can stop and they can ask the question and move on. They get CE points. It's a great introduction to the next step, which would be an in-person hands-on program. And once they tackle the in-person live hands-on, and I do a three-day in-person program, uh, then we can do a one-on-one -on -one and uh, I find that really effective. So once they've done the e-learning, once they've done the live in person, then they can come and spend one-on-one -on -one with me in my office for a whole day, bring a couple patients in and under my supervision with my assistants and their assistants, because yeah. training their assistants is, is important as well. Yes. You <laughs> we find that, that experiential um, um, whole process is really great. It's a great learning experience. And then it doesn't end. And then we continue on with the learning because that's just the beginning with, uh, with study clubs as well. And whether that's um, you know one-on-one -on -one study club, which I do quite frequently, asking questions, spend an hour with the doctors, or whether it's in a group, I find they work really, really effectively. So doing that tiered approach to e-learn, in-person, hands-on, and then a follow-up, which is really important, I found very, very successful to maximize the educational experience. So also for understanding a proper diagnosis and starting from a proper diagnosis because maybe they can see a daily practice because I understood that many endodontists are looking for the real life. So they don't want to see a fake situation that usually they can see inside a course or in zone remotely and so on. And they want to see your daily practice on patient and so they sometimes they since that they want to see also in trouble sometimes and how you can manage troubles and it can happen. So from my point of view, one-to-one uh, -one and uh, uh, experience in the dental office is uh, the best way for avoiding mistakes in the future and for understanding also a proper diagnosis. Uh, of right. course, 
Of course, you can uh, read uh, books, you can follow thousand webinars, but when you are in person, in front of the patient, the situation is uh, completely different. It's like completely uh, different. Yeah, it's like a video game, and instead on the car <laughs> during a, a Formula One competition. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Agreed. Okay, Gary. Thank, thank you so much, Gary. Thank you for your time. And uh, I hope to see you in person soon. So what are your next appointments in terms of uh, congresses, flights around the world? Do you have some plan or not at the moment? Yeah, so my next, uh, well, I'm doing some, you know, one day things, two day things uh, locally and across Canada. Uh, my next big conference is very exciting. It's going to be at the Pacific Dental Conference in March of 2022. I'm going to be doing three different segments, uh, the uh, half day on, um, um, on the Thursday before the conference. I'm going to be doing a uh, half day lecture on diagnosis the, um, from A to Z. Once the patient walks in to actually before you anesthetize that patient, what we do. So we're going to do that uh, full um, diagnostic uh, lecture and case presentation, some endoperio. Uh, the next day, I'm going to do a, law, a hands-on in-person program, a half day, using the new Dentsply Serona Pro Taper Ultimate, which uh, really capitalizes on dentin preservation to shape the canal. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, at that afternoon, very exciting, I'm taking the main stage at the Pacific Dental Conference, and I'm going to be doing a live patient demonstration. So, whoa. wish me luck. <laughs> okay, so the reason why you have to relax a bit, my friend. So yes, sir, uh, sir. I leave you to your uh, holidays. I don't uh, ask you more time. And thank you again for being here at the Coffee With. And thank you, Gay, for following the Staletan Endodontics community. You have to follow us. Great talking to you. You have to That's post some Ricardo, clinical Nick. cases there in Staletan Endodontics. We are waiting for you. No problem. Can't wait to see you. I'm going to be in Italy. I'm actually coming to Italy in, um, in May, 2022. In May? Okay. Yeah. Waiting for you, my friend. Waiting for you. I hope person. to see you. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay. All right. You take care. Nice to see you. Thank you so much, Gary. Have a good day. Have a, and thank you again for this interview. See you, my friend. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Ciao.